If you're new to golf and it's your first time out, then you're probably not familiar with the golf cart etiquette. But don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know. What's going on, guys? Jake here with Rough Golf, and today, this video is all about golf cart etiquette. I want to make sure that you're prepared and ready to rock and roll when you get out on the course. All right, so the very first step before you can get out on the course and get your round started is you need to set your bag up on the cart. Now, most carts have two sections where you can set your bag up, one for the driver, one for the passenger. So just keep that in mind when you decide to play if you're playing with a buddy and you're not driving then your cart needs to go on the right hand side if you are driving left hand side okay pretty simple to remember now i have a cart bag some of you may have a carry bag it doesn't really matter that much except that the carry bags might be a little thinner so you just have to tighten the strap a little bit more but you want to set your bag up where you've got the handle facing out. You want access to all of your clubs. You don't want the bag turned one way or the other. You wanna keep it as straight as you can facing back out. So you've got access to these clubs. Then you're gonna take this strap, okay? Just a standard strap. You're gonna run it through this handle, okay? And we wanna make sure your bag doesn't fall off once you leave the parking lot, which happens a lot, believe it or not. You're gonna run it around, okay? Come over to the other side here. Make sure that all of your little attachments are on the opposite side of the strap so they're not tucked up under and you can't get to them when you're out there on the course, okay? You might have to reposition your bag a little bit. And what you're gonna do is just slip it right on through this clasp here, okay? Then what I like to do is get my bag straight, give it a good pull, and then shut that clasp down. And there you go. Your bag is attached to the cart. It's not gonna go anywhere when you're driving. Now, something to remember, golf courses are hilly and they have bumps and stuff, so your bag's gonna shift and it'll probably turn and, and move a little bit, and that's perfectly okay. It's supposed to have a little bit of movement, so don't worry too much about that. All you have to do is reposition it at the next hole and you'll be just fine. Now, next up, we have cart controls. They're very, very simple, kind of just like a car with actually fewer selections. There's just forward and reverse, okay? That's it. Most of the time, you're gonna keep it in forward. When you do throw it into reverse, be aware that there will be a beeping noise to let everyone know behind you that you were backing up, okay? All carts have that. It's standard on everything that I've ever driven from the 1990s and on, so there will be a beep. Next, we have the gas pedal on the right and the brake pedal on the left. You're gonna notice there's a little piece of the brake pedal up in the top left-hand corner that has a P, sometimes it says park. That's your parking brake, okay? Every time you stop, because golf courses are hilly, go ahead and put on that parking brake. It's simple, when you press the brake down, all you have to do is step on that side of the brake and it'll lock automatically. And it stays locked until you hit the gas pedal and then it pops up and you can roll along. But make sure that you're putting that parking brake on because you don't want a golf cart that's running back down the hill and you have to chase after it because uh, it could hurt somebody. So just make sure that you use that parking brake. Now next up is storage, okay? And it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got three little holes here for your tees. And then of course you've got three little spots for your balls where you can just pop them right in and you're ready to rock and roll. They won't pop out. Now I like to keep a couple tees and a couple balls. That way if I have to hit a provisional or I break a tee, I've got quick access and I'm not holding anybody up by running back to my golf bag and rummaging through to find a new ball and a tee. Newer carts actually have a phone section. You can just pop your phone in there if you've got some tunes going or maybe you've got a uh, distance app open you've got a nice spot to put that phone what main types of golf cart that you're going to drive either gas or electric in my experience electric is often very kind of like uh rapid when you hit the gas so it kind of like throws you back immediately it's, it's instantaneous gas it kind of like rolls on so you'll get the feel for it when you go out there and you first try to drive a cart but those are the two types Gas is going to be a lot noisier, okay? I'm about to drive up to this tee box and you can hear exactly how noisy this thing is. I'm not even sure you can hear me over the microphone, but that's what a gas golf cart sounds like when you're running it, all right? Don't jam on the brakes too hard because it's going to lock the wheels up and you don't want to do that, okay? That would be bad. We don't want to lock the wheels up and slide. It damages the golf cart, okay? So just brake slowly and then, of course, hit that parking brake just like that. And now you're set. You can go ahead and get your club and tee off. So today is a very wet and muddy day. It's about 40 degrees and it's been raining all week, but I just had to get out here and play golf because I'm a rough golfer and I play in all types of weather. But 
When you have wet and muddy conditions, there's a rule for carts called cart path only, okay? It's pretty easy to remember when it's cart path only, it's cart path only. Keep the cart on the designated path, okay? Also, you'll see signs out a lot of times. There's little signs that say cart path only. They may have it posted on the door. Some of courses have it out on the course. If there are no signs out, just ask the guy at the counter when you go to pay for your greens fees if there's any specific cart rules today. Now, if my ball lands out in the fairway, obviously I need to estimate my yardage grab a few clubs around those yardage points, and then walk out to my ball, leaving the cart on the path. That is what you need to do during cart path only. Now, when the weather is nice and you can actually take the cart out on the course, there are often designated markers that show you where you can enter the fairway and where you need to exit the fairway. And they're typically just after the tee boxes and before the green. And that's to ensure that the tee boxes obviously stay intact and undamaged by any type of cart tracks or anything like that, as well as the areas around the green. You want to keep those pristine because your ball might not make it to the green and you just don't want to land in a cart track because that would suck. So make sure you're paying attention to those entry and exit points. Sometimes you'll see a, a marker that says scatter and that is an indication to drive out into the fairway, but the grounds crew and the groundskeepers want you to try to take different paths, okay? You'll obviously see where the grass has been matted, where carts have run over before. You want to take a different path because you don't wanna just continue running in that same path. It's gonna wear down the grass and it's gonna be so much more difficult for the groundskeepers to get that area back up to snuff for us golfers. So if you see that sign, the scatter sign, just make sure that you're not following in those same cart path tracks and you'll be a-okay. Now another thing with carts deals with par threes, okay? Most courses that have par three holes do not allow carts to exit the cart path. Today it's cart path only so I don't need to worry about that, but if you go out on a nice dry summer day, make sure that you look for the signage or if you have questions and you're not sure, just ask the guy at the pro shop. But nearly every course I've ever played at, par threes are always cart path only, okay? They're shorter holes, they don't want you to run the carts over near the green, which is actually gonna wear down the area around the green, as I mentioned before. So just make sure on par threes, you keep that cart on the designated cart path and you're gonna be great. Now there's also another rule for carts called the 90 degree rule. This is kind of in between the two stakes that indicate the start point and the exit point for the fairway and the cart path only rule. And the 90 degree rule is often used when the conditions are damp, but maybe not saturated, or maybe they're doing something where they're trying to improve the conditions of the course and prevent cart tracks from damaging some newly planted grass seed or something like that. But the 90 degree rule is basically where you're gonna be riding along the cart path until you become level with your ball. Then you're gonna make a sharp 90 degree turn and go out towards your ball, hit your shot, hop back in the cart and drive exactly back out to the same point that you entered the fairway onto the cart path and then continue along. So another common thing you will see are stakes about 30 yards or so from the green. And this is an indication of a no-go zone for the golf cart. The greenskeepers want to keep the area in and around the green in good shape, no cart tracks, no tire tracks, nothing like that. So that when your ball doesn't make it on the green, which happens very often in my case, the area around the green is just nice and playable and you don't have to worry about taking an unplayable lie or ground under repair or anything like that because there's no carts allowed past that. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, then check out this playlist right here. Tons of information about how to get started in golf. Thank you so much for watching and as always, keep on swinging.